Just a reminder that we're celebrating communion, so please have your elements of bread and cup ready as we celebrate and commune together this morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship with the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. We're so pleased that you're with us. I want to let you know again that the session has voted to resume in-person worship outside at the Parish House parking lot next Sunday, May 9th at 10 a.m. We will take worship plans a month at a time as we move forward. We will continue to pre-record in case of rain. Will you please join me in the call to worship? We are here to praise and worship God. The one who created us for love. We are here to worship the true vine. The one in whose love we abide. Easter people, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession, followed by a time of silent prayer. God of mercy, we confess that we have not borne the fruit of the Spirit. 
We have not loved others as you have loved us. We have denied the promises of baptism and cut ourselves off from you. Forgive us, restore us, that we may abide in your love and live out your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ that we are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives our sins strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we, we are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good morning. Now, you know I've already told you before that I love gardening. So I have a question today. What are pencils made of? Wood. Wood, wood from a tree, right? Oh my goodness, so I am going to plant this pencil in this dirt, and then I'm going to water the pencil, and it'll grow into a tree, right? No, a tree can't grow from a pencil. You mean that no matter how much water and sun I give to this pencil, it is not gonna grow into a tree? It's dead and has no seeds, Mrs. Mead. Oh, for my goodness. This is what Jesus was talking about in our Bible story today. He tells us that a branch is supposed to grow and bear fruit from the vine of the tree that it's attached to. If it's not attached to the tree, it will not get water or food from the tree and it will die. What Jesus means is that we need to remain attached to him. We need to receive God's love and healing and forgiveness from him. Then we can share it with others. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your stories that help us to understand your message. We know we need to stay connected to you to live our best and most fruitful life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now join our hearts together in the unison prayer for illumination. Come Holy Spirit, that through your word, we may be guided into the love of God for all the world. Amen. Today's reading is from Psalm 22 verses 25 to 31. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. At the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down into the dust. And I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Listen for God's word to us today. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers, such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. 
My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I come from a long line of gardeners. People used to come and visit my grandmother's legendary garden beds. My dad got both of his hips replaced in his 70s so that he would be able to get down in the dirt and then get back up again. The horticultural imagery in the Bible makes perfect sense to people who dig in the dirt. Grapes have been cultivated in the Mediterranean region of the world for at least 7,000 years. The art of winemaking was known long before Jesus. Jesus' first sign in the Gospel of John is to turn water into wine at a wedding as a sign of abundant grace. In the prophets, God is portrayed as the vine grower and as the vineyard owner. There is so much about wine in the Bible that my husband teaches a class at Princeton Seminary called Wine in the Bible with tastings. It's very popular. So Jesus is working with the familiar when he teaches about the vine grower, the vine and the branches. You may know something about the cultivation of grapes. You may have seen grape vines in the off season cut way back almost to the ground after the harvest. Cutting vines back to almost the base of the root keeps the vines clean and disease free. In growing season, the vines are carefully pruned so that all of the energy of the plant is channeled into growing the grapes. The plant's purpose is to grow good fruit. If there were no pruning, if there were no cutting back, the plant would be all vine and leaf and would be all over the place. Pruning, cutting back, makes the plant more fruitful, makes it hardier, makes it more resilient. This is the imagery behind Jesus' words in John 15. This teaching is the culmination of what is known as the great discourse in the Gospel of John, chapters 13 through 15, which is sardine packed with all of the things that Jesus wants his disciples to hear before he leaves them. He's preparing them to live without him, without his physical presence. This is his last night with his closest friends. This is the same night that Jesus gets down on the ground to wash his friend's feet. In these teachings, in the Great Discourse, Jesus employs a variety of metaphors to explain who he is and what his mission is. These are known, of course, as the I am sayings in the Gospel of John. We've been exploring some of them these last few weeks. I am the bread of life. I am the way. I am the living water. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. Jesus has said all these things about himself in this gospel. And the I am sayings offer clues to Jesus' identity. Moses asks God when he first encounters God. In Exodus 3, Moses demands that God tell him, what's your name? What do I call you? And God's response is, I am. I am, or I will be what I will be. I am. I am the true vine, Jesus says. He uses God language. He uses the name of God to disclose his identity, to speak of himself. I am the true vine. And then we have this word abide, which is all over this passage Abide is such a bible -y word, isn't it? We don't use it in everyday speech, really. The Greek word for abide is meno, and that Greek word has a lot of depth and, and richness to it. 
that word can be translated as abide, which we see a lot in scripture, to remain, to endure, to stay in place, to dig in. It's a long haul kind of word. Abide appears eight times in the New Revised Standard Version of this passage, eight times in eight verses. Jesus is saying that both he and God have settled in for the long haul with us. God, the vine grower, Jesus, the vine, we are the branches and we are all interconnected for all time, abiding. God, the grower, prunes and cultivates Jesus as vine and humanity as the branches. This is what Jesus tells his disciples. I am the vine, you are the branches. And that you is plural. Jesus is addressing the people with him, the disciples, but also over their heads, the abiding community of disciples down through all the ages, including us. We are the branches. Our ministry is not only to bear good fruit, but we are the fruit. We are the fruit. Our lives are the fruit of this mutual interdependence between vine grower, vine, and branches. The fruit we bear is the life of love that we lead. The fruit we bear is the life of love that we lead. We are the fruit. We bear the fruit. We have been pruned all the way back to our roots by this pandemic year. We have seen the best and the worst of human nature this year. We have suffered and we have struggled, all of us, globally. Yet I think that in this time of pruning, we are discovering that God can take even what is most challenging in our lives and use it to prepare us for service and to prepare us for new growth. This pruning time has prepared us for service and it's prepared us to grow in new ways. I believe that this pandemic crisis is also an opportunity this pruning back for new growth allows us to focus on what is emerging now rather than focusing on all that's been lost. We can do both things at the same time. We don't have to do one or the other, but we can focus on what is emerging now, what the new growth is. And there's a lot of it here in our life together. We're about to um, take steps back into in-person worship in the parking lot, but we'll be together. We will begin live streaming our worship services from the sanctuary sometime this summer. A number of your leaders had been thinking about live streaming for many years, <laughs> but the pandemic has accelerated that for us and it will be happening this summer. And along with that, we will be figuring out how to ensure that all of our people who would want to watch us online as we live stream have access and know how to access. That's tech support, right? New growth. We are a green church. We've been a green church for a while now. Uh, this pandemic is offering us opportunities to think about what that means for us. I know I have been wondering whether there is another way to provide information to worshipers on Sunday morning besides printing over a thousand sheets of paper into bulletins that get left in the pews, right? We're a green church. We don't have to do things the way we did it before. There are opportunities here for new growth. We have dug in deeper into service with our community in Morris County during this pandemic. 
I'm hearing from church members who have found new meaning in their lives in service to others during this time. They will be reshaping their lives so that they can continue that ministry of service. New growth. We abide here. We've abided here since 1733. We are in it in Morristown for the long haul. We abide, but there's new growth happening. I think this lesson asks of us, what kind of harvest are we? What will we be? What fruit will our ministries grow? These are discernment questions. I think that's another churchy word <laughs> these days, discernment. The discernment team has begun its work on our behalf. They have been planning the discernment process that the Presbytery requires us to follow as um, we get ready for uh, calling a new pastor, uh, get that in the works sometime later this year. Discernment, right? Thinking about with intentionality what we are doing, what else we might do, what we might leave behind, right? This interim time, and even more urgently, this pandemic time, is offering us the opportunity to reflect on our mission with fresh eyes. What fruit is growing well here? What branches might need some pruning because they no longer provide good fruit? We have the opportunity, we have the gift, as we look forward towards the fall to reconsider how we utilize the energy, intelligence, imagination, and love of this congregation, the love that God has gifted to us. I have a hunch that God, the vine grower, may have new fruit in mind for this particular vineyard, the vineyard that is the Presbyterian Church in Morristown the branch of Jesus' vine. May we be ready to grow in new ways. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. 
I'm Vicki Wilson, once again representing the Outreach Committee, asking for your help with our May Food Drive in support of the Interfaith Food Pantry Network, which has tirelessly helped struggling families before and during the COVID pandemic with food and other services. Members of our church have been faithful supporters of this food pantry since its inception, and we hope to continue that trend this year. Our food drive will occur between May 9th and May 23rd, and we are asking you to be as generous as you can with non-perishable food items. A list of these can be found on the church website under announcements or in the May Tower tidings. Please bring your food and bags for the bin on the parish house porch from 9 to 3, Mondays through Thursdays during the drive. Or bring your bags of food to our open air church services in May at the parish house parking lot. There will be plenty of bins around. Or you can order items from our Amazon wish list on the church website. Of course, financial contributions via breeze or check are equally acceptable. We thank you for all your love and generosity to this outreach mission. And now we welcome Sandra Benedict, Director of Development for the Interfaith Food Pantry Network. Thank you for inviting me to speak during your moments for mission. The Interfaith Food Pantry Network is grateful to have been chosen as your guest today. My name is Sandra Benedict and I'm the Director of Development at IFPN. Our organization has been around for 26 years. We had our humble beginnings in the basement of the Baptist Church in Morristown. Today, we've grown to two pantry facilities with our main pantry, warehouse, and resource center located in Morris Plains and a satellite pantry located in Morristown. We also provide home delivery to homebound and disabled clients. And we have a fleet of three vans as part of our Healthy Choices Mobile Pantry program. 2020 was certainly a challenging year for many. At IFPN, our enormous spike in demand compounded the challenge of having to immediately revamp the way we distributed food as a result of COVID-19. I'm pleased to say we didn't miss a beat. We simply built the infrastructure to provide safe curbside pickup of groceries to our rapidly growing client base, never once having to close our doors. All the food is nutritious and uh, there's, there's plenty of it. And, uh, I, I wish there was a way I could give back. Please know how grateful the Interfaith Food Pantry Network is to Presbyterian Church of Morristown for your years of support and partnership. Since 2005, your church has donated over $77,000 and 20,000 pounds of food. And I understand that your generosity is continuing. The Presbyterian Church of Morristown is holding a funds and food drive from May 9th to May 23rd. We're very appreciative. Our mission is fueled by partnerships with friends like you. Thank you for your support and generosity. All praise and thanks be to God who has given us every good gift. We invite you to offer your praise and thanks to God with your gifts and support of the ministry of the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. Thank you. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God, and wherever we are in the world, we rejoice that we can be at table together. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in this feast. Let us pray. God, we praise you for this world you love and for all your good creation. We praise you for creating humankind in your image to live together in love. You have made covenant after covenant with us. And even when we have turned away from you, you have never turned away from us. We give you thanks and praise. Thank you for sending your son to us who lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and he died our death. And he rose to new life that we might live and that all creation might be restored. 
Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be Christ's body in the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed and arrested, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. It is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat you of this. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. Drink you of this. Every time you eat this bread, every time you drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day and we are thankful for the example of Christ that we have to follow. Let every day be an opportunity for us to love one another, to live sacrificially, and to always put others' needs before our own. Let us always remember the sacrifice that Christ has given us in all of humanity. And God, our Creator, you have made all things in your wisdom, and in your love you save us. You are our Redeemer and Sustainer, and John 15 proclaims that you are also the true vine that nourishes us so that we can remain with you as you remain with us. Today, we pray for all of your creation. We pray for those who may feel distance from your presence. We pray for those who have been treated unjustly. Let us surround them with love and help usher in the justice that comes with the kingdom of God. We pray for those who have committed injustices against one another. Let us name those wrongs and always be those who reflect the life of Christ and compel others to do the same. We ask these things so that all of humankind can have peace in the creation that you have made. We lift up today the family of Joyce as they mourn her passing. We ask that you, Lord, be near to them during this time. We also pray for Diana as she recovers from successful back surgery. Continue to surround her with your healing hand. For those who are on our hearts and minds who have not been named, we take this moment to lift them up to you now. With all faith, hope, and trust in you, let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and abide with you always. Amen.